Climate and environmentally related challenges become more demanding with each passing year. The drivers of climate change are global and not limited by continent and national borders. The European Commission has proposed a European Green Deal to make the European Union climate neutral by 2050. The aviation sector, amongst others, should also set out a viable plan towards the greening target. In parallel, international cooperation could certainly contribute on the inception, development and demonstration of key green technologies. Good afternoon everybody, I'm very pleased to be here to give you an outline where we are in terms of the forthcoming research and innovation programs. First of all, I would like to see and to wish the, you the best in this current COVID-19 crisis and I hope you are all well as well as your family. As you know, we have a new college, a new commission since November 2019 and the priorities have been already set up before the crisis and these priorities might be adapted following the context, in particular, perhaps, I don't hope so, but perhaps an economical crisis following this COVID-19 outbreak. In this context, the main priorities before the crisis was the Green Deal approach. Green Deal meant decarbonization and climate neutrality of all sectors by 2050, with kind of interim period by 2035. This applies for all sectors, but more particularly in aviation. Aviation where industry has a prominent role, but also research organizations, as well as stakeholders and universities. I have to underline that research innovation is bridging the gap between competitiveness as well as environmental concerns mitigation. And there we have the intention to give to this forthcoming program uh, this huge priority. For the time being, we are in such kind of uncertainty on the ground that the multi-annual financial framework is still under huge discussion between member states. The Commission is proposing a new compromise, which will be discussed end of the month by member states, and we expect perhaps a lot of difficult discussions. Member states have the preoccupation to mitigate the crisis, but also to set up a very good economical context following this outbreak. There, in the Commission, we have only to take that into account. Therefore, we will have to give priorities to the next programme. For the time being, we work on the continuation of the current Clean Sky 2, which will be called perhaps Clean Aviation on the form of a partnership with the private sector. But also, we will continue the collaborative research under cluster 5 of Horizon Europe and there we will have to find us to strike the right balance between acceleration of the more promising climate neutral technologies and also pre-commercial research in terms of safety, in terms of IT tools, in terms of interconnectivity, etc. etc. For the time being, the priority is given to acceleration and deployment in the current partnership because we would like to make the best use of one euro of public money invested to get concrete outcomes by 2035, which correspond to the time where the fleet might be renewed. Therefore, in this context, it would be good to have a very performing plane with a very efficient motorization, aerodynamic, interconnectivity, and so on. That said, we have also to face a very, very competitive international context. You all have heard that the US, China are uh, uh, giving provisions or provide a lot of money for the companies and aviation sector in order to pass the crisis. Therefore, here the Commission has already made available a lot of money for that, but we will have also to make sure that 
the privatization under the Green Deal context will not impede the competitiveness of the aviation in Europe. Therefore, uh, to conclude, I wish you perhaps the best and I hope that you will pass the crisis in good conditions as well as your relatives. I hope seeing you soon. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello, my name is Michael Gill from IATA and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to speak to you, at least virtually, about the issue of greening aviation. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to speak with you and uh, sorry that we're not able to be meeting physically in person uh, in Berlin. Airlines have always had uh, an imperative to be the most fuel efficient uh, possible, but that uh, imperative has taken on even more importance when we've been faced with the climate challenge. And that's why back in 2009, the world's airlines and indeed the whole industry got together to agree a set of ambitious climate action goals and a very clear uh, plan put in place uh, to achieve those goals. And at the moment, we're very much concentrated on our long-term objective of reducing our CO2 emissions levels to 50% of what they were in 2005 by 2050. How are we doing that? It's by the new um, aircraft fleet, new engines, uh, new aircraft. It's by better uh, use of um, air traffic management techniques, better operational methods. It's also our support for the world's first ever sector-wide um, offsetting mechanism, the famous ICAO uh, Corsia scheme. And it's also going to come around, we believe, by a genuine energy transition towards the use of sustainable aviation fuels um, for our sector. And there's more and more happening in that space um, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Recently, two approved new pathways for the production of SAF. Uh, and we'll shortly reach nearly a quarter of a million commercial flights having taken place on some blend of SAF um, over the last uh, 10 years. Those are developments um, which we're really uh, proud of uh, and we think that there's going to be even more ramp up of the use of SAF for the aviation sector in the months and years to come. Aviation is a global business uh, and therefore um, the approach that we take to climate change has to be taken on a global level. Um, that's why um, we view this on an industry-wide basis and it's, but it is the contribution of individual airlines towards achieving um, emissions reductions which are contributing to that overall goal. Now collaboration across the sector is in our DNA. Collaboration between um, airlines, airports, air traffic management organizations, manufacturers, catering companies, fuel companies, that's what allows our industry to operate safely and securely and effectively on a day-to-day -day basis and it's that same spirit of collaboration which is allowing us to meet the climate challenge. Working across the sector on all of these initiatives around um, new aircraft technology, alternative fuels, um, better use of operational and infrastructure um, uh, management techniques. It's that collaboration which we, we believe is really effective and there's an important point to that as well. It's approaching this on a global level which avoids any competitive distortions and that's a big concern for the airlines especially uh, in today's operating climate um, where there is uh, very tight uh, operating margins for carriers. So the use of global standards, the use of a global approach we believe reduces that risk of competitive distortion. Now we're clearly, clearly in a very unusual, exceptional period um, in aviation's history with uh, uh, nearly 17,000 aircraft uh, currently grounded and very little um, flight operations going on in, in some parts of the world in 90% reduction uh, in traffic and those are really extraordinary times. Now we believe there will be a rebound that may take some time it may take uh, 18 to 24 months before we're back at the same level of traffic as we saw prior to the COVID uh, crisis but that traffic is going to come back and when it comes back um, the uh, approach that the industry has taken to climate change is going to become just as important as it was previously and one thing I'd like to mention to you um, really is the need for that recovery to be done in a sustainable way um, not just recovery for the sake of it, but taking this opportunity uh, to recover our industry in a sustainable, in a sustainable way. And I think that's possible um, around um, three topics. Firstly, taking advantage of this new operating environment to really rethink um, how airlines fly and how the, um, airspace is managed. Um, trying to make the most effective and efficient use of our operational techniques and the management of our airspace. The second is, I think, a genuine energy transition towards 
sustainable aviation fuel. We have an opportunity now to, to build an entire new industry around the uh, production and supply to the airline industry of fuels coming from genuinely sustainable sources. And this is a unique point in our history in which we can do that. And the third part uh, about our sustainable recovery, I think, is getting a recognition from governments and indeed from the general public of the huge um, economic and social benefits that the aviation industry brings to society. The world feels like a very small place at the moment with closed borders, um, the inability of most of us uh, to travel. Um, but once we're able to do so again, I believe that there has to be a recognition and there will be a recognition that we're an industry which has a unique role to play um, in bringing economic benefits to the world, increasing so social, cultural, educational um, exchange. And we have a unique point in our history to rebuild our sector, recognizing um, those unique benefits that we bring. So thank you again for the opportunity to speak to you, even if briefly, look forward to uh, engaging with you all in the near future, hopefully face to face, um, as we continue to uh, discuss um, the sustainable future of the aviation sector and we continue to work together collaboratively to find long-term solutions. Thank you very much. The challenge of greening of aviation is very central in Airbus. It has always been. Uh, we've uh, improved our environmental footprint over generations of aircraft and still we intend to improve it further. And we do believe that now it will have to go through technological disruptions, revolutions that are on our agenda. Um, it's a must, and uh, that's, I think, the top uh, of our research and technology and innovation portfolio. The uh, international collaboration is for us key. I mean, we have to see uh, what Airbus is made of. We are an international co collaboration by birth. Uh, so we believe that uh, it is the way to be stronger, to share costs, uh, to be more diverse from a cultural standpoint. Uh, and we will need that uh, for the uh, disruptive technologies to come to make the aviation greener. Uh, we'll need it uh, in Europe and we'll need it worldwide to develop technologies and to develop the necessary evolution of the regulatory framework. The COVID crisis is affecting us badly. Uh, it's hitting our industry like it's hitting our countries, uh, but it doesn't affect our determination uh, to improve our products, particularly from an environmental standpoint. So our green agenda is not hit by the crisis, even though our companies are. And we are even more determined than before to make it happen. Uh, and I think that will be a sign of our resilience through this crisis, to keep the green agenda very high uh, and to serve what our societies are expecting from us. ICARE is a Horizon 2020 coordination and support action. The project pursues to form an integrated universal collaboration strategy for Europe in the field of aviation research and innovation, supporting the work program of Horizon 2020 and beyond. Good morning, my name is Gigelik and I am the iCare coordinator. I will present you in this short film what iCare is about. What is the meaning of iCare? ICARE stands for International Cooperation in Aviation Research and ICARE is both the name of a contract and of the consortium in charge of this contract. This contract with the European Commission started in October 2017 and finished in May 2020. The main deliverables are recommendations for future international projects in the domain of research and technology for aviation. The ICARE consortium has 13 partners. They represent all European aviation players, and this representation is also valid for the advisory board. For implementing this contract, we had the honor to have bilateral talks with representatives of five countries, Canada, China, Japan, Russia, and the USA. A great thanks for the representatives of this country to have participated to this discussion. For the other country, around 15, the results are based on lessons learned from past experience and intensive navigation on Internet. What are the main technical findings? I will start with some figures. 
to inform you that we discover a number of 100 potential projects for future collaborations for a total cost of 500 million euros. An attractive way to reduce the cost is, of course, the material approach, but some potential barriers should be considered for this approach. And the 11 technical projects could be clustered in eight domains greening of aviation, material and structure, safety and security, technology for the future, air traffic management, new configuration, regulation and certification, supersonic and high speed. The highest level of interest or investment is for the cluster greening of aviations. In this of project, some technology are common to other projects, such as hybrid propulsion, energy storage, connected industry, human factors. So common research with other sectors could also be envisaged. Concerning COVID-19, it was not part of the eye care project. The outbreak happened late with regard to the eye care working plan. The eye care contract will finish end of May 2020, and some of this activity will be handed over to the ACARE group in charge of the internal cooperation. I'm confident that this group will consider the COVID-19 issue within its future activity. But there are also more general results that I would like to share with you. And the first one is when we would like a collaboration to be successful, a win-win situation should exist for both countries and the trust also. And other also, I would say, results based on the survey and interview of iCare is that the international collaboration has been considered as very successful by all the partners. And this is very encouraging for the future. There are also some recommendations. Duration should be between two and three years. Number of participants should be around 10. Concerns should be well balanced. The work should be at low TRL. And of course, the funding from the different administrations have to be synchronized. Concluding, I would like to thank the administration for having facilitated the contacts, the partners in the other country and in the European Union which have contributed to the iCare project. And if you need further information on iCare, please visit the website. Thank you very much for having listened to this information on iCare and see you soon. Hello from Washington, D.C. in the United States. I'm Kevin Welsh. I'm the Executive Director of the Office of Environment and Energy at the Federal Aviation Administration in the U.S. Uh, number one, I'm sorry that we can't be together in person, um, but this virtual setting will have to do. So I'm going to do my best to answer in uh, about two minutes or less uh, how we consider the issue of greening aviation at the Federal Aviation Administration uh, and our views on the role of international collaboration. So number one, uh, the issue of greening aviation is incredibly important to us. Uh, we think about from the beginning of looking at how we model and consider the imp environmental impacts of aviation, how we can improve those impacts, whether it be um, reducing fuel burn and emissions or noise, um, and how we can implement policy changes to address those issues. Uh, you know, now more than ever, it's important to continue making the, the significant progress that has been made uh, on this topic over many years. Of course, we're confronted with the uh, COVID-19 emergency um, and trying to, like everyone else, uh, understand what this means for the sector uh, more broadly and also in particular the greening of aviation going forward. Um, and as much as anything, we're committed to uh, continuing that um, effort on sustainability um, and working with stakeholders uh, within the United States and around the world uh, to address aviation environmental challenges. Now, in terms of international collaboration, um, it's always really been at the bedrock of what we do, whether that's on the research side uh, or policy development and, and ultimately agreeing on standards and mechanisms at the International Civil Aviation Organization. Um, so like in the past, uh, we currently are looking to the international community um, and partners that we work with regularly to help work together 
uh, to recover from the COVID emergency, and in particular, think about how we can address environmental issues from aviation in that context. Uh, so again, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you all today in person, um, but I really look forward to the opportunity um, to continue these dialogues moving forward, and I'm glad to have the chance uh, to prepare a short video um, uh, to, to, to at least uh, share the views of the United States and uh, look forward to seeing some or all of you sometime in the near future. Thank you very much. Stakeholders for Chinese Aviation Society have focused on the development of new energy aircraft and the progresses are made. For CE, we released the white paper on development of electric aircraft in 2019. In my understanding, Green Aviation marks the new stage of Asian technology development. It leads us to the following concerns and challenges. First, to work on new layout, new power system, and other technologies related to new concept aircraft. Why continuing depth research for traditional technologies? Second, to investigate the interaction of new technologies like communication, computing, AI, and new materials with the development of green aviation. Last, to explore new air traffic management technologies. Green aviation where this is a bar for air versions. This will eventually lead to a more constrained global market for civilized aircraft. Working with global partners in green aviation research is highly in line with the development concept of Chinese government. To support the development of green aviation, CE will continue to participate in international research projects under the intergovernmental framework. Besides, international workshops and training courses for young engineers will be encountered. Last, CE will contribute to the standard setting for green aviation in international organizations and actively support the related research and policy making. Thank you. Canada's action plan to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions from aviation forms the basis uh, for Canada to respond to ICAO's goals. The action plan identifies uh, key measures that are expected to have the greatest environmental impact. First, fleet renewals and upgrades, more efficient air operations, improved capabilities in air traffic management, alternative fuels, and others. So CREAC has supported many projects in these domains and intends to support more projects uh, in the future. It also helps to develop relationships and research and innovation projects to support the new modes of transport with a view of more efficient intermodality and connectivity. Now, industry's efforts are not enough to stop the sector's increase in greenhouse gas emissions. Despite the targets set by the industry and the progress measured by ATAG, significant work remains to be done. The increasingly visible impact of climate change is likely to harden public attitudes, particularly towards aviation and aerospace, and increased attention will be paid to these issues globally. As countries adopt global targets, or even national targets, governments and consumers can become increasingly demanding of the aviation industry to meet binding targets. So critical factors ensuring that the environmental transitions are important to mention. Environmental uh, aviation, environmental research and development and coordinated regulatory measures. Some new technologies, if they prove to be viable, can also compete in performance 
such as providing faster connections uh, over longer or shorter distances, for example, Hyperloop, air taxis, etc. So this has several implications for the sector. The companies have the opportunity to strengthen their global public reputation as a sustainable provider of critical connection infrastructure and systems serving people worldwide. So to do this, companies in the sector will have to accelerate the transition to the use of alternative fuels, for example, and uh, hybrid and electric propulsion systems, for example, also. International collaboration is therefore key to ensuring the nations jointly with industry to respond to this public aspiration and CREAC and other partners in Canada uh, are aiming to pursue that goal jointly with uh, European partners. So thank you. Hello, I'm Shuji Mitori, Director General of NEDOR's Robot and Artificial Intelligence Technology Department. NEDOR stands for New Energy and Industrial Technology Development Organization. NEDO promotes a wide range of national research and development projects in collaboration with the Japanese government, industries, universities, and research institutes. Concerning Horizon 2020, NEDO has contributed to various projects, and one of them is related to reducing aircraft emissions. With regard to CIFA 2 project, Sumitomo Precision Products Corporation from Japan and Rolls-Royce jointly developed a new heat exchanger technology to reduce aircraft fuel burn. And now, NEDO is developing key technologies for electric propulsion systems, such as superconducting technology, batteries, motors, and power electronics. These technologies are one of the strong points of Japanese industry, and they have to be very powerful to speed up making the aviation industry more environmentally friendly. On the other hand, there are remarkable aircraft, engine, and system technologies in Europe. I believe it would be very important to bring together our respective technological strengths to contribute to solving common issues like SDGs. Through the Horizon project, we have established a good relationship, and I hope this message can help to accelerate our further collaboration. Now, this is a real tough situation, but we can overcome COVID-19. Let's continue to work together for the future of the Earth. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Sergei Chernyshev, and I am a Chief Scientific Officer of Tsagi. Uh, our country, Russia, as part of European uh, community, uh, certainly uh, in line with uh, fly path uh, 2050 challenges. And uh, similar challenges are addressed uh, in the Russian National Aeronautics Program. SAGI, as a Russian center for aeronautics, has been uh, involved for years in the topics uh, for green aviation. I can mention a few uh, projects for example, for aerodynamic drag reduction, aeroacoustics, uh, noise study, uh, emission, sonic boom for supersonic transport. Uh, to reduce fuel burn, we consider new uh, aircraft configurations like a blended wing body or hybrid electric aircraft, new propulsion systems like open rotor, distributed propulsion or high bypass ratio uh, engines. Among other research uh, areas, I would like to mention uh, also alternative fuel for aviation uh, with particular focus on gas to liquid uh, fuel or cryogenic fuels in flight conditions. Uh, working together is always a beneficial way to expedite required results. We are happy to work together with our European uh, colleagues uh, under uh, continuous support of European Commission in various research areas. Hello everybody, my name is Andrea Gentili and I am currently uh, Deputy Head of the Unit in Charge uh, of uh, Aviation Research in the European Commission, Directorate Research and Innovation. 
I'm delighted to, um, to be here with you today, even though virtually, for celebrating the successful uh, end of iCare project. iCare is a coordination action supported by the European Union in Horizon 2020 program. Two years ago, when we kicked uh, off this uh, project, we had basically two major objectives. To establish a relevant network of cooperation among the major aviation stakeholders worldwide in order to achieve a common understanding of the global challenges and put the seeds for joint actions in uh, uh, Horizon Europe. And second, to find the main research areas of potential international cooperation, either bilateral or multilateral, between Europe and the main regions of the world. After more than two years of intense work, we are happy to see that the two objectives have been achieved. There are now well-established channels of communication between European, Canadian, Chinese, Russian, American and Japanese stakeholders. We hope that after the end of iCare, those interactions could uh, continue and could also generate bilateral or multilateral uh, cooperation activities. Thanks to ICARE, we have now more than 100 topics of potential international cooperation activities, which will be the basis for the European Union in order to establish an international strategy in aviation in the context of the coming Horizon Europe, uh, the next framework for research and innovation in the period 2021-2027. We will need to select them carefully on the basis of their potential impacts towards our common goal, which is a significant uh, decarbonisation of aviation by 2030 and a climate neutral aviation by 2050. Indeed, we are currently living in very difficult times. The current COVID-19 crisis has severely impacted our health systems, our economies, and more in general, our ways of living, in particular in the way we move in our cities, in our regions, in our country, and abroad. The aviation sector has been dramatically touched by this crisis. 90% of flights have been cancelled in the last three months the majority of aircraft have been grounded and people have stopped to, to move around, preventing us to get together for the final meeting of ICARE. However, we are here now. We exchange, we talk, we prepare a future, we dream together. The recovery will be slow and uncertain. However, it will come, for sure. Therefore, we need to continue to cooperate to seek opportunities for joint actions and in particular at an international level because international cooperation is important for three main reasons. Because global challenges like climate neutral aviation require global solutions, because markets are worldwide and because good ideas are not only in Europe. In conclusion, my personal wish is that international networks uh, created within iCare can continue to operate after the end of the project, despite the current uh, difficult circumstances, and they could generate international cooperation activities aiming at our common goal of a safer aviation in a smaller world. Long life to iCare. Thank you.